And in the spirit of prophecy, we read in volume 1, page 99. God is sifting his people. He will have a clean and holy church. We cannot read the heart of men, but the Lord has provided means to keep the church pure. God is purifying his church by the mighty shaking or mighty sifting. Shaking out the careless, the indifferent, the spirit of discord and strife. In volume 5, page 80, we read, God will have a people pure and true. In the mighty sifting soon to take place, we shall be better able to measure the strength of Israel. The signs reveal that the time is near when the Lord will manifest that his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor. God will purify his church. This testament was written in 1882 and soon the church would be purified. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 228. God's love for His church is infinite. His care over His heritage is unceasing. He suffers no affliction to come upon the church, but such as is essential for her purification, her present and eternal good. He will purify His church even as he purified the temple at the beginning and close of his ministry on earth. The church will be purified. And why is it necessary that the whole church should be purified and there would be no more communion between faithful and unfaithful? The, shifting, the sifting or shaking will go on until there will be no more careless and indifferent, no more spirit of discord and strife in the company. And then the church, they will be all one. In Testimonies for the Church, volume 6, page 401, we will read about the unity that was prophesied. You remember, we read that there would be both separation and unity. Well, we read about the separation. Now let's read about the unity in God's remnant church. Volume 6, page 401. And we read this. But on the other hand, when the storm of persecution really breaks upon us, the true sheep will hear the true shepherd's voice. Self-denying efforts will be put forth to save the lost. And many who have strayed from the fold will come back to follow the great shepherd. The people of God will draw together and present to the enemy a united front in view of the common peril. Strive for supremacy will cease. There will be, will be no disputing as to who shall be accounted greatest. No one of the true believers will say, I am of Paul and I of Apollos and I of Cephas. The testimony of one and all will be, I cleave unto Christ. I rejoice in him as my personal Savior. Thus will the truth be brought into practical life. And thus will be answered the prayer of Christ uttered just before his humiliation and death. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, 
that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. John 17, 21. The love of Christ, the love of our brethren, will testify to the world that we have been with Jesus and learned of him. Then will the message of the third angel swell to a loud cry, and the whole earth will be lightened with the glory of the Lord. The unity among God's people will take place, as we have read, when the storm of persecution really breaks upon us, the true sheep will hear the voice of the true shepherd. And many who have strayed from the fold will come back. And with this, there will be a unification. But who will come back? Only the sheep. The goats will never come back. They will stay away. The careless, indifferent spirit of discord and strife will be shaken out. But many who is a true sheep will hear the voice of the true shepherd and will come back. At that time, there will be no strife for supremacy that indicates that previously there was strife for supremacy. But there will be no more. No one will say, well, I belong to this, I belong to that. No one will have his favorite minister or favorite worker. All of them, they say, I belong to Christ. Souls will not be converted to a minister but converted to Christ. And then they will introduce the truth into practical life. And thus, the prayer of Jesus will be answered. They all will be one. But why is it necessary that the church should be pure and should be perfect unity in the church, in the remnant church? Because God will not pour out His Holy Spirit on a mixed multitude. And let us read this from the Spirit of Prophecy. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, page 270. God's displeasure is upon His people, and He will not manifest His power in the midst of them, while sins exist among them and are fostered by those in responsible positions. Did you notice? God will not manifest His power while sin exists in the church. On page 265, in His dealing with His people in the past, the Lord shows the necessity of purifying the church from wrongs. One sinner may diffuse darkness that will exclude the light of God from the entire congregation. And in Testimony for the Church, Volume 5, page 714, we read, If our people continue in the listless attitude in which they have been, God cannot pour upon them His Spirit. In Volume 6, Page 42, volume 6, page 42. For the outpouring of the Spirit, every lover of the cause of truth should pray. And as far as lies in our power, we are to remove every hindrance to His working. The Spirit can never be poured out while variance and bitterness toward one another are cherished by the members of the church. Envy, jealousy, evil surmising, and evil speaking are of Satan, and they effectually bar 
the way against the Holy Spirit's working. Did you notice? God can never pour out His Spirit. While in the church there is variance, bitterness toward one another, while there is envy, jealousy, evil surmising, and evil speaking. These sins have to be overcome, or else those who do not overcome these sins, they will be shaken out, and the church will be purified. In Testimonies for the Church, volume 8, on page 20 and 21, I read a very interesting statement. Notice that it was after the disciples had come into perfect unity, when they were no longer striving for the highest place, that the Spirit was poured out. They were of one accord. All differences had been put away. And the testimony born of them after the Spirit had been given is the same. Mark the word. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. And the Spirit of him who died that sinners might live animated the entire congregation. The disciples did not ask for a blessing for themselves. They were weighed with the burden of souls. The gospel was to be carried to the ends of the earth, and they claimed the endowment of power that Christ had promised. Then it was that the Holy Spirit was poured out, and thousands were converted in a day. So it may be now. Let Christians put away all dissension and give themselves to God for the saving of the lost. Let them ask in faith for the promised blessing, and it will come. The outpouring of the Spirit in the days of the apostles was the former reign, and glorious was the result. But the latter reign will be more abundant. The Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was poured out only when they were united. The mind and soul of them were one. And the Spirit of Prophecy says, so it may be now. What will happen to those that in the days of preparation for the lettering, they neglect their preparation. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 619. I was shown that if God's people make no effort on their part, but wait for the refreshing to come upon them, and remove their wrongs and correct their errors. If they depend upon that to cleanse them from filthiness of the flesh and spirit and fit them to engage in the loud cry of the third angel, they will be found wanting. The refreshing or power of God comes only on those who have prepared themselves for it by doing the work which God bids them namely, cleansing themselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Those who neglect their preparation, they will be found wanting. The latter rain will not come to prepare them, but the latter rain will come upon them that are prepared for it. Those who neglect the preparation, they will be disappointed because they will not receive the lettering. The lettering will come only on those that are prepared. And we read in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, 
Testaments for the Church, Volume 5, page 214. Not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot or stain upon them. It is left with us to remedy the defects in our characters, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. In this statement, it is made very clear that opportunity to given every one of us to remedy the defects of our characters, to give up the spirit of discord and strife and abandon the position of those that are careless and indifferent. There is opportunity. And when the soul is cleansed from every defilement, what is the result? When the soul is cleansed, then the latter rain will fall. Now, let's consider something important that will come in the time of the latter rain. And we read this from early writing, page 33. Early writing, page 33. I saw that God had children who do not see and keep the Sabbath. They have not rejected the light upon it. And at the commencement of the time of trouble, we were filled with the Holy Ghost as we went forth and proclaimed the Sabbath more fully. In this statement, it is clearly stated when will the lettering be poured out? At the commencement of the time of trouble. But let us understand, this time of trouble here is not Jacob's trouble or the time of great tribulation after the close of probation. Oh no, this time of trouble is before that. It is called a short time of trouble. This is explained on page 85 of early writings. The commencement of that time of trouble here mentioned does not refer to the time when the plague shall begin to be poured out, but to a short period just before they are poured out while Christ is in the sanctuary. At that time, while the work of salvation is closing, Trouble will be coming on the earth, and the nations will be angry, yet held in check so as not to prevent the work of the third angel. At that time, the latter rain, or a refreshing from the presence of the Lord, will come to give power to the loud voice of the third angel and prepare the saints to stand in a period when the seven last plagues shall be poured out. The commencement of time of trouble is commencement of a short time of trouble. And this short time of trouble is also known as the time of God's destructive judgments. In Testimonies for the Church, volume 9, page 97, we read about this very short time of trouble. Page 97, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9. Oh, that the people might know the time of their visitation. There are many who have not yet heard the testing truth for this time. There are many with whom the Spirit of God is striving. The time of God's destructive judgments is the time of mercy for those who have had no opportunity to learn what is truth. Tenderly will the Lord look upon them. His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still stretched out to save. 
while the door is closed to those who would not enter. This time of God's destructive judgments is that short time of trouble. And notice that the door of probation are closed for some and opened for others. When probation closes for the church, for the remnant church. In Acts chapter 3 verse 19, we have a wonderful message. It says, Repent ye therefore and be converted so that your sins may be blotted out and the time of refreshing may come. Repentance conversion, and then blotting out of sins. After sins are blotted out, we will receive the letter rain. So our cases are decided. Our cases were examined in the investigative judgment. And those who purify themselves by obeying the truth, they were approved. And for them, their case is decided, and they receive the letter rain. And we have read in early writings 33 that when we were filled with the Holy Ghost, we went out to proclaim the Sabbath more fully. Because there is a people out there in the fallen churches that they have not yet received the testing truth for this time. They have never heard the Sabbath proclaimed in its clearness. And in the time of the time, in the commencement of the time of trouble, we went out to proclaim the Sabbath more fully. And for them, the door is still open. Why is the lettering given us? In the time of the outpouring of the seven last plagues, there will be no intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary. Probation will be closed. And the saints, they need to have the Holy Spirit to enable them to stand in a time of trouble. Now, in the time when the message of the third angel will be given with the great power, let's see what will happen. Great controversy, page 606. Thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed. As the time comes for it to be given with greatest power... The Lord will work through humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to His service. The time will come when the third angel's message will be given with the greatest power. And this greatest power is the power of the Holy Spirit, the latter rain. And at that time, God will use humble instruments. And what will these servants of God do? Men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. And the sins of Babylon will be laid open. The fearful results of enforcing the observances of the church by civil authority, the inroads of spiritualism, the stealthy but rapid progress of papal power, all will be unmasked. By these solemn warnings, the people will be stirred. Thousands upon thousands will listen who have never heard words like these. In amazement, they hear the testimony that Babylon is a church fallen because of her errors and sins, because of her rejection of the truth sent to her from heaven. As the people go to their former teachers with the eager inquiry, 
Are these things so? The minister present fables, prophesy smooth things to soothe their fears and quiet the awakened conscience. But since many refuse to be satisfied with the mere authority of men and demand a plain, thus says the Lord, the popular ministry like the Pharisees of old, filled with anger as their authority is questioned, will denounce the message as of Satan and stir up the sin-loving multitudes to revile and persecute those who proclaim it. When the third angel's message is proclaimed with a great power, then many will be awakened, thousands upon thousands, who have never heard words like these, they will now hear. And many of them, they will go to their ministers and ask them, is this the truth? And the ministers, they tell them fables to soothe their fears. But the faithful ones, they refused to accept these fables. And they demanded, thus says the Lord. Then the popular ministry will rise up against those that proclaim this message. And now what happens next? I read in continuation next paragraph. As the controversy extends into new fields and the minds of the people are called to God's downtrodden law, Satan is astir. The power attending the message will only madden those who oppose it. The clergy will put forth almost superhuman efforts to shut away the light, lest it should shine upon their flock. By every means at their command, they will endeavor to suppress the discussion of these vital questions. The church appeals to the strong arm of civil power, and in this work, papists and protestants unite. This power attending the message of the third angel is the power of the latter rain, and the clergy will put almost superhuman effort to shut away this light we read here that they will appeal to the strong arm of civil power. The churches will unite with the civil power. What for? Why they unite with the civil power? The reason is plain. The churches could never issue a decree penalizing those that will not keep Sunday. The church can never issue or a decree, but the civil power can. And the civil power will issue a decree. So the churches will enforce Sunday keeping through the civil power. The next, very next sentence says, as the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided, the law will be invoked against commandment keepers. What will come as a result of the message being given with the greatest power? What will come? Sunday enforcement. On page 605, we read this. But not one is made to suffer the wrath of God until the truth has been brought home to his mind and conscience and has been rejected. There are many who have never had an opportunity to hear the special truth for this time. The obligation of the fourth commandment has never been set before them in its true light. He who reads every heart and tries every motive, will leave none who desire a knowledge of the truth to be deceived as to the issues of the controversy. The decree is not to be urged upon the people blindly. Everyone is to have sufficient light to make his decision intelligently. 
the Sunday decree, when that Sunday decree will be universal, that will be urged upon the people of the whole world. But the decree will not be urged upon the people blindly. Before that, they will receive sufficient light and they will make their decision intelligently. And what power is that power that enables the people to understand clearly the truth? The latter rain. And as a result of the latter rain will come the final test. In the next paragraph it says here, the Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth especially controverted. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve Him not. Here, the Sunday decree is called the final test. Now, when we speak final test, we understand that there were previous tests because there is no final before previous. When is God's church tested? And when will end the test of God's remnant church? Early writings, page 42, we read, When was God's people tested? Early writings, page 42. I saw that since Jesus had opened the door into the most holy place, which contains the ark, the commandments have been shining out to God's people, and they are being tested on the Sabbath question. Since when exists the test for God's remnant church? Since 1844. And when will finish the test of God's remnant church? When their sins are blotted out and they receive the latter rain. Their cases are decided. But there is a final test. And that final test is to God's people in Babylon. Before the people of God that comes out of Babylon are sealed, they have to be tested by the final test. In Christ Object Lessons, page 412, Christ Object Lessons 412, only a short sentence. The great final test comes at the close of human probation, when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Did you notice when will the great final test come? At the close of human probation. And at that time, it's too late to begin a work of reformation. It's too late for the soul's need to be supplied. So keep in mind, the final test, great final test, comes at the close of human probation. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, page 141, 141, Volume 7, this earth has almost reached the place where God will permit the destroyer to work his will upon it. The substitution of the laws of men for the law of God, the exaltation by merely human authority of Sunday in place of the Bible Sabbath is the last act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal himself. He will arise in his majesty to shake terribly the earth. He will come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the world for their iniquity. And the earth shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Did you notice here that 
the Sunday decree, when that Sunday decree will become universal, that is the last act in the drama. After the last act, there is no more act. And we will see this shortly. In volume 6, page 18, volume 6, page 18, we read, As America, the land of religious liberty, shall unite with the papacy in forcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the false Sabbath, the people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. There will be a national Sunday law in the United States, in America, in this land of liberty. And when this law will be issued, the countries everywhere in the world, as it says here, every country on the globe will follow America's example. And that is the final act in the drama. That is the final test. And that comes at the close of human probation. But now, what will happen in the time of the Sunday decree when the mark of the beast will be urged upon the people? Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 81. The time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. The mark of the beast will be urged upon us. The test will come upon whom? Every soul. By what? The mark of the beast will be urged upon us. Now, you remember, we have read in early writings, in the chapter of the shaking, that the servant of the Lord lost sight of a company. Now, our attention now will be focused again to that company that was lost sight of. We read, those who have step by step yielded to worldly demands and conformed to worldly customs will not find it a hard matter to yield to the powers that be rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threatened imprisonment, and death. The contest is between the commandments of God and the commandment of men. In this time, the gold will be separated from the dross in the church. Very important statement. But we have to understand this statement. Those who step by step, united with the world, they are now ready to take the easy popular side, or they subject themselves to the powers that be exactly as we have read in Great Controversy 608, that large class, they are uniting more and more to the world. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy popular side. Now in this time, in this time of the Sunday decree, of the universal Sunday decree, there will be a separation it says here, in this time, the gold will be separated from the dross in the church. Which church is this? This is not the remnant church. How do we know it's not the remnant church? Because the remnant church heeded the council to Laodicea. Their members were purified. The careless and indifferent were shaken out. Spirit of discord and strife were banished from the church. And the church was purified, received the latter rain. 
But there is another church that they still have mixed gold and dross in the time of the final test, in the last act of the drama. But did you notice that the operation here is different? It is not the dross that will be shaken out in this church. The gold will be taken out. The gold will be separated from the dross in the church. This is that large class that the servant of the Lord lost sight of. But if this gold are separated from the dross, the dross remain in the church and the gold is taken out, where will this gold go? Spirit of Prophecy will give the answer. Early Writings, page 261. Early Writings, 261. I saw that God has honest children among the nominal Adventists and the fallen churches. And before the plagues shall be poured out, ministers and people will be called out from these churches and will gladly receive the truth. Satan knows this, and before the loud cry of the third angel is given, he raises an excitement in these religious bodies that those who have rejected the truth may think that God is with them. He hopes to deceive the honest and lead them to think that God is still working for the churches. But the light will shine, and all who are honest will leave the fallen churches and take their stand with the remnant. This statement is very important because here three classes are mentioned. Nominal Adventists, fallen churches, and the remnant. Well, we know who the fallen churches are. But who are nominal Adventists? Many people contend saying that, oh, these are the first day Adventists from the time of William Miller. Let it be. However, we should not forget the fact that the spirit of prophecy focused these nominal Adventists in the time just prior to the outpouring of the plagues. And ministers and people will be called out from these churches. Why are they called out from these churches? Why are the honest called out from the nominal churches and the nominal Adventists and fallen churches? Because Revelation 18 verse 4 says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and receive not of her plagues. For this reason they have to come out because the fallen churches will receive the plagues and the nominal Adventists will receive the plagues. What about the remnant? The remnant, as described in Testimonies to Ministers, Page 17, the remnant will be protected against the plagues. Now the question is, when did this remnant come into existence? To whom the honest souls will unite? Where the gold that is separated from the dross will go? When did this remnant come into existence. It came to existence when the message to Laodicea shook the church, which resulted in a separation. And those that prized the message to Laodicea and the council, they obeyed the truth. They were purified. They received the letter in. And this is the remnant church. 
And this is the remnant church that will give the final warning. But will that class of Adventists, large class, who have received great light, will they receive the plagues? Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, 211. The class who do not feel grieved over their own spiritual declension, nor mourn over the sins of others, will be left without the seal of God. Can you see here that non-pleading class? They will be left without the seal of God. The Lord commissions his messengers, the men with slaughtering weapons, in their hands. Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Here we see that the church, the Lord's sanctuary, was the first to feel the stroke of the wrath of God. The ancient men, those to whom God has given great light and who had stood as guardians of the spiritual interests of the people, had betrayed their trust. That church that had received great light but they did not mourn over their own spiritual declension or over the sins of others. They were not among that class that were pleading and agonizing with God. They were left without a seal, and they were the first to receive the stroke of the wrath of God, which is the outpouring of the plagues. Therefore, this church that had received great light, from which... The gold is removed and the gold goes to the remnant. That church will receive the plagues. Therefore, they are nominal Adventists. And when they join, the gold join the remnant, the honest and faithful join the remnant, what will happen? Then they receive the lettering. They, will test, they were tested and they will receive the seal of the living God. And then what happens? After they make their decision and they are sealed. In great controversy, we read on page 613. And here, in this short paragraph the order of the events appear as we have presented. Great Controversy 613. When the third angel's message closes, mercy no longer pleads for the inhabitants of the earth. The people of God have accomplished their work. They have received the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and they are prepared for the trying hour before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven. An angel returning from the earth announces that his work is done. The final test has been brought upon the world. And all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of the living God. Then Jesus ceases his intercession in the sanctuary above. What will happen when the honest souls, the gold, they come out of Babylon, join the remnant, they receive the seal? What will happen? Probation closes. But remember, there is one important reason why they have to come out of the fallen churches. You know why? Let me read to you. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5. Page 505, the angel is to place a mark upon the forehead of all who are separated from sin and sinners. And the destroying angel will follow to slay utterly both old and young. 
No one can receive the seal of the living God while they are still in a church composed of sinners and saints. They cannot receive the seal of the living God. The angel will place a sign or a mark on the forehead of those that are separated from sin and sinners. This is why the call will be given. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and receive not of her plagues. And when the honest souls, God's children from Babylon, come out and join the remnant, probation closes for the whole world. And the destiny of all is decided forever. Therefore, we have to understand that in the spirit of prophecy, there were prophecies about a separation in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And after that separation, a work of reformation taking place in one class and the other class, they remain unreformed until the time of the final test. And in the time of the final test, the few faithful that are in there are removed. But there is now in the time of the final test, another separation in that same church. And we have to be very careful not to confuse the two separations. One comes before the latter rain, and other comes after the latter rain. And at that time, when that separation will occur after the latter rain, there will be no time to begin a work of reformation. It's too late for the souls need to be supplied. When is it that the remnant church that will give the final warning came into existence? In that separation caused by that which we have read in volume 6, page 400, caused by war conditions. And this we will see when we will talk about the history of the reform movement. It's my wish and desire is that the Lord may help us, that we may understand the prophecies of the Bible and of the spirit of prophecy, which are written for our admonition. And we may know for sure where we are. And may God help us that we all may be among that remnant that will take part in giving the final warning to the world. And we may stand in the time of trouble, having the Holy Spirit with us. And we may meet Jesus when he comes to take us home. May God bless us and help us that this may be our experience. Amen. Hey.